the the power of Christ's life was building up at, at this point in the story he's no longer an unknown he's healed the sick he's raised the dead he's given the blind sight uh, he's uh, walked on water he's calmed the storm the, there's a lot of PR out there people know that a lot is happening and there is this a uh, uh, sense of ascending power and at the time the people who were gathered around him were politically oppressed and part of their mind-born thinking was that this power was going to be used to conquer in an external way and suddenly that oppression would be removed and many other positive things would happen but Jesus knew that none of those expectations were going to take place none that in fact it would be death and persecution and suffering and um, abuse and humiliation. So he needed to uh, sort the wheat from the chaff at that point. It wasn't as if everyone couldn't gain something, but he needed those who were going to have to stand afterwards to not uh, waffle within themselves. So he made it hard. Eat my body, drink my blood. I just, I love that. Eat my body, drink my blood. You have to go back to before the church interpreted it for you. He just said, you must eat my body and drink my blood or you are not one of me. And the disciples said one to another, this is a hard teaching. <laughs> and many left him. Because if it was mind born, it made no sense. So he turned to his close disciples and said, what about you guys? Peter answered, where would I go? And what Peter was saying, truthfully, tr fully, was, I haven't the foggiest idea what you're talking about. You know, I don't know what this is. He didn't explain it to Jesus, and Jesus didn't explain it to him. Jesus said, why are you following me? That's what he was saying. What is the basis of your relationship to me? Peter answered, it's not even a relationship now, Lord. Where could I go? You know, your reality and mine, we are one reality. And nothing, not persecution, not Peter's own failure and the pressure of the moment to have the courage to stand by the one he loved, nothing could separate him from that experience. All of the spiritual path is really about our ability to perceive. It's really not about whether the masters are great or not and who's the greatest master or anything like that. It's about why do I, why am I on this path? 